Hello, Dominic from BMT and today we talk about the lag and drag in the forehand but more about the lag position which I also call the slot position and how to get there. Well, the lag is actually nothing more than the racket dropping or turning in that position and for that we have different ways to get there. It's not only the body turn that brings the racket in that lag position there are different ways and the first fact for instance is that most men are using the firing the hip or that body turn to get in that leg position where the women don't use a lot that body turn to get in that leg position they most of them they already start in that leg position so the second fact is that you will not be able to do it every time sometimes when you are on the run, you have to go for the ball. So you will not be able to have that nice body turn. So you will only play out of that arm when you have to stretch for a ball. Or sometimes when you go to the front, yeah, you will see they will block the hip and have a little turn out of that shoulder, not a completely body turn. So depending on the situation you're in, yeah, you are able to do that body turn or not. So let's say the ball comes in an ideal situation and if we see that I see four different timings to get in that leg or slot position. Now the first timing for me is that it doesn't matter if you have that straight position you turn the racket first and then you turn that body even in that open position you turn the racket and then you turn the body. The second way is the way the man do it so you are here they start to turn that body and the racket drops yeah, in that leg position, even in that straight, they start to turn the body and the racket drops in the leg. Now, the third way is that you already go, the women's way, you already go in that leg position. So, for instance, Halep, number one in the world, she was winning some Grand Slam. So she goes here and in the back, she's already in that slot position. And from there, she turns, which is also a decent forehand and the fourth way is the turning of the body and the racket simultaneous so you come here now the racket starts to go back and the hip turn yeah the hip turn so you turn simultaneous even at open position you start to turn simultaneous yeah depending on the situation you will come in you can go and run you can start to turn simultaneous you can sometimes start to turn the body get that lag you can already be in that leg position and the turn. So for me, there are four different ways to get in that leg position. Now, a third fact is that the longer the racket stays on the right side, yeah, the longer it takes before the racket gets in that leg position. And for that reason, your hand is getting closer to the contact point the moment your racket comes in that leg position. So there is not a lot of time you need to find the ball so you have more that whip action. So if you watch Kyrgios, for instance, who has some amazing forehands, yeah, his racket stays as long as possible. And then here he turns and his hand is here and it's almost touching the ball. And from here on, bam, he has that snap. I don't, I know a lot of people don't like the word, the snap, but it's like, I call it the, the whip action, yeah, through that contact point. And for that, Fed also stays the racket very long, yeah and his racket is almost his arm is almost beside him the moment he comes in that light position and here he let it go where a lot of people like Djokovic and Nadal yeah, they go and they also turn but the leg is happening more here and they have a longer way to the contact point so the more the racket stays in the front yeah the more snap or wave caption you will have uh, coming into that light position so now let's check out some videos I found on the internet, different ways to get in that light position and also have one of my students practicing the three different ways to come in that position so she can use them all, yeah, depending on the situation she is. So let's check out those videos. So let's start with Djokovic and check out when he starts to turn his body, when his racket comes in that light position and he starts to turn now and racket comes here in that leg position watch how the racket is pointing more to the left side and watch his shoulder position here he turns 
forwards. Let's take another one. So watch his racket position and his shoulder position because we will check it with other players. So pointing more to the left and the shoulder position. Watch how far his hand is away from the contact point. Also something important. Yeah, here we have Nadal, the side view. He will tap the dog and from there on he will start to turn and he turns, click and there we get that lag position and from here on he will turn through that contact. Here we go, pops and let's check it out from behind. It's a very slow motion. Here we will see it better and hand is going backwards and the shoulder turn will start now. So here you will see, and again, click. Here comes that racket in that leg position, very important. Watch how it's pointing from him to the right, and watch his shoulder position, because we will compare it with some other players. I mean, we will compare it with Federer and Kyrgios, those who has the most leg in all their strokes. So here we have Dominic Thiem, and click. There he goes, watch his shoulder position, watch where the racket is pointing. Very important to compare it with Federer. And then he turns the body. No problem. Let's check out another one. And the body turn starts. Yep. And here he's already in that leg position. Yeah, he uses a little more his hands. The more the shoulders are straight, the more they use the hands yeah, to get that leg position. But it starts with the shoulder. So here we have Roger. Now, what's the difference? His racket stays on the right side, hands go to the front, 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 and now he gets in that leg position. Watch how far his hand is away from his body and how close it is to the contact point. And from there, up, he lets the racket go forwards. Yep, a little more whip action. So the longer your racket stays to the right, the more whip action you will get through that contact. And let's take another one. He's a very good example to getting the leg out of that body turn. So as you can see, he starts the body turn now. And what's click, here he gets it. Watch how far the hand is away and how close it is to that contact point. So this is typical for Federer. And we will compare that with some other players which are already faster in that leg position. So check out his shoulder position here and watch where his racket is. His racket head is still on the right side of his hand, which is very important. We will now watch some other players in that same shoulder position or even less turned or less open. So watch Nadal. His racket is already in that leg position, in that same position of Federer. So there's a difference. Also here we have Tim. His racket is here already in that leg, where with Federer, the racket is already is still on the right side. Here also Djokovic. Same shoulder position, but racket already in the leg. Now, this is another guy. Here we have Kyrgios. That is the guy of the whip action. Yeah, his hand never goes completely to the back. He stays more with his underarm pointing in the direction of 4 o'clock. And he never stretches his arm in his whole movement. So he stays closer with his hand to the contact point, And for that, he needs a lot of more power out of his body turn to get that racket but he has that really that whip action and here you can see how long it takes how close he is to that contact point before the racket getting in that leg and from there he has a lot of whip and a lot of body turn which gives him all that power in his amazing forehands yeah watch how close yeah, when he comes into that leg position yeah for that point that leg Kyrgios is the amazing guy I like Feather, it's more stylish, this is more power. So here we have Kachanov. And Kachanov for me is the one who turns simultaneous the racket and the body. So let's check it out. Now he has that shoulder line, racket is still on the right side. Very good, no problem. But you will see, to get in a good position, here he starts to turn racket and shoulder. But we will check it out a little closer. So. The shoulder line, check it out. Check out where the racket is. And from here on, he will turn. Turn both, voila, racket and shoulder. But let's take a closer look. We have here that same position, but he is already here. Watch how little shoulder he had used, but he's already in that slot position, in that lag position. So 
he started in this position and went in that position with so little shoulder turn so from that position yeah so he's turning simultaneous that position to that position and from there yeah he finishes his rotation and now here we have chichi pass chichi pass is the one who turns more the hand than any other player so watch where his racket is and he still has to start the shoulder turn it's not really already in that slot position but it's very close to that slot position so for that reason let's check out where he gets into that lag position and it's the same stroke watch how close it is and now he's in that lag so watch how little shoulder he used also See, he turns more out of the hand not simultaneous Kachanov starts to turn a little earlier yeah and there's a difference in so here we have Halep Grand Slam winner number one she was so uh, what's the racket pointing to the left her racket is already in that leg or slot position and from here she will turn that body yeah towards that contact point which is a good forehand here we have another view yeah watch where that racket is pointing here it's already to the left and from here on she will turn without changing the angle yeah too much contact and she's already started now here we have maria yeah it's a very very slow motion i, I think it's uh, 960 frames a second so what's the racket pointing to the left and she will never change the angle no more she has here in that position so sorry again for the super slow motion but it's a good way to see the difference between the women and the men yeah and she will start to pull the hand forwards together with the shoulder turning here go go and she never changed the angle but she will have a good contact point in front of her shoulders even to the net where you can see with Kachanov where his shoulder is much more in front the moment he touches the ball yeah but he has more body rotation than Sharapova has here also the racket if you check the racket I would love to see the racket a little more closed yeah but okay that's my opinion so here we go to Julia Jurges what's the racket it's already over her head pointing to the left it's already in the leg position and she still has to turn voila but it's not a bad forehand she's a top 10 player so let's check out another forehand even on the run she brings the racket over the head already in that lag or slot position watch where the racket is pointing to the left and she still has to start that shoulder turn and from here on she goes turning in that position but not a bad forehand here we have d number one with the ladies check out how little body she uses to get that forehand and here she clicks it yeah out of her hand into the slot position what's the shoulder line yeah it's still very straight watch how little hips she will use to get there and to be sure of that yeah we will check out her contact point voila this was her contact point so what's the hip line what's the shoulder line not a lot of body into that shot and she had the time to step forward so here she will take that open position yeah and as we check again she clicks it here and still the shoulders are very straight they are not that open and she goes more out of the arm with most men the right shoulder is in front of the left here we have the new serena williams in the future yeah what's the racket pointing to the left side you should think that the new generation will try to use a little more that leg and drag like the men do but it's not the way we see it yeah she will be very good no problem but watch how the racket so you don't have to always have that leg and drag to have a decent forehand but this is the biggest difference between the men and the women now for me there are some women and for me the best forehand here we have it is Barty and Barty watch how that racket comes here in that leg position she has more a men's forehand and from here on she will have also that good body rotation very quick yeah she's close I'm not <laughs> Kyrgios but she's close to Kyrgios watch her body turn pop voila she turns very well and the main reason is 
Watch her racket here. Her racket is not pointing that much to the left side, like Halep or uh, Coco. And for that, she will lower down the hand and she will start to turn the body. And for that, that racket will drop in the leg position. And she is close to the man's forehand. So I like Barty, her forehand very much. And that's the biggest difference between men and women. So here we have an example. When you cannot turn that body, not the hip, not the shoulder, and it's only playing out of the arm. And we also have here the forward movement I was explaining. What's the hip of Roger Feather? The hip stays behind, and here he's already in that leg or slot position, where in a normal position, his racket, his hand would be much closer to the contact point, his shoulder would be turned much, and here he goes out of the arm. So this is for me the difference between men and women. Now here we have one of my students and I make her practice the four different stages because you will not always be able to turn the body so you have to learn to turn the racket in position and drag the racket yeah, or pull like I say to her turn and pull now here she will turn the racket and turn the body which we have seen more with Chichi pass by the man yeah she likes this one the most, yeah, this is already more fluently, so turn, turn, that's uh, the second way we do. Now, from there we also have the simultaneous position, that one we don't do a lot, depending on the speed of the ball, how fast you have to run, so here we will try simultaneous, yeah, which is more the catch and off way. So as you can see, there are different ways to get that racket in that slot or leg position and here she will practice first the body and then the racket drops in that leg she turns and the racket drops in that leg so she practiced the four different ways but hey she's only 11 years old and we have to do the four different ways that's my opinion so she will come in positions that she will turn the body first later position she will sometimes turn only the racket so these are for me four different ways to get that racket in that slot or leg position and as you can see in the clips I made there is a big difference between men and women so here we have watch how long the hand goes forward and how close it goes the hand to get in that contact so this is my opinion thank you for watching and hope to see you in another video